Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, where are you? Here. Where is here? Out here behind the barn. What do you want, Claudia? Oh, there you are. What, what do you want? Nothing. You mean you go bellowing around the countryside as if I were a lost cow? Here, bossy, here, bossy, here, bossy. <laughs> And when you find me, you don't want anything. You're very bossy, and you're a very nice bossy. Thank Ooh. you. Thank you. Anyway, you've got your metaphors mixed, you know? Oh, I have. Uh... By the way, what do they call a bull for short? Bully? Mm. Oh, darling, I really didn't want anything. I just wanted to know where you were and what you were doing. Well, you've been asking a lot of questions, but to answer the last one, I'm not doing anything. Well, don't overdo it. Say, now, look, you and Mama have to start treating me like a couple of nursemaids with an errant child. Just pretend that I've grown up and know how to take care of myself. I'll pretend, but you don't. Don't what? Don't know how to take care of yourself. I haven't been doing anything else for a couple of weeks. Mm. Any day now you're going to get fed up and start doing something foolish, and I intend to be on hand to stop you. Sure you do. Something foolish like what, for instance? Oh, something foolish like mending the pasture fence, for instance. That gives me an idea. It's no good of an idea. Now, look, Claudia, I, I was in an automobile accident, yes, I but heard. I'm all well. I'm all patched up now. I refuse to be made an invalid. A hammer and a pocket full of staples and renailing the down wire on the fence is not hard work. And I am going to do it, no matter what you say. I won't say anything. I'll bet. But I think it's foolish. Oh, you think it's foolish. Mm. Tell me one reason why you think it's foolish. Oh, uh, let me see. Um, because the wire doesn't need nailing up. And have our cows... Cow, singular, and yet to be. I stand corrected. And have our singular cow wandering all over the countryside, no survey. You were with me yesterday when we walked out here and looked at the places the wire is down. You looked at the wire, darling, but I looked at the look in your eye. And... And what? And I told Fritz to mend the fence. He fixed it yesterday afternoon. Oh. I wish that Bobby could walk... You've done it. Done what? Out non sequitured me. That's the word, isn't it? You're always saying that I say things that don't hang together and follow and, and make sense. There is absolutely no <laughs> connection between fixing a fence and Bobby walking. Mm, that's what you think. If, if Bobby could walk, he could get himself into all kinds of wonderful trouble, and you'd have your hands so full worrying about him, you wouldn't have any time for me. That's what you think. I always have... David, do we have any bears or wild animals? Come again? I'm not following you. I say, do we have any bears or wild animals around here? I'm just asking a simple question. Uh, a simple question out of the blue. A simple question out of those elder thickets on the th hillside over there. Something moved. Where? I don't see anything. It's, it's, it's bigger than a rabbit or a woodchuck, and... It's not as big as a cow. So it must be a bear. No, I, I don't see anything. I suppose you didn't hear anything? Yes, I heard something, and that hunter is going to hear something from me. David, your nostrils are white. I don't think it's wise. You don't think what's wise? Dr. Barry doesn't want you to overexert, and whoever fired that shot has a gun. And he's done his last shooting on this place. Hey! Hey, you up there on the hill. Come over here. I want to talk to you. City pot hunters shooting everything that moves, breaking down fences, starting fires. When will I get him? I'll give him a piece of my mind. Th there he is, darling. Where? I don't see him. See, just to the right of that thicket. Oh, I guess you won't have to give him a very big piece uh, of your mind. I'll blister him. Why won't I? Well, because he isn't a very big hunter. Uh oh. He is a. Sort of a half-pint Nimrod. <laughs> oh, and I know him. My old fishing companion, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy! 
Hey, come over here a minute. Don't, don't blister him too hard, David. Mm, Just yeah. show him off the place and tell him he has to hunt someplace else. This land is posted. Mm, it's not so easy. You see, Jimmy is a neighbor. Well, neighbor or not, you wanted this to be a place where animals weren't hunted. You don't hunt yourself. You posted the land. Jimmy can read. Yeah, I guess he didn't think these signs applied to him. Well, well, he is just a child. When he comes over, you can sort of explain it to him. That he's a child? No, you goop, that he isn't to go hunting. I'm afraid he wouldn't understand. There is very little that that little boy doesn't understand. Jimmy is a smart tyke. Well, uh... Look, if you're afraid to tell a little boy to scout and skadoodle off the place, I'm not. I don't like the idea of things being killed on our place, and, and neither do you. Uh, what would you say to him? Well, I'd say, Jimmy, Mr. Norton, and I don't want any shooting on this place. Oh. We don't do any shooting, and we don't want anyone else to do any shooting. That is why we put up the no trespassing sign. Trespassing. Now, that's a... That's a pretty hard word for a boy to understand. And I'll spell it out for him. It means private property. It means stay out. And that's a pretty hard idea for a neighbor to understand. But we own the land. It's ours. We pay taxes so we can... That's what the deed says. To Claudia Norton and David Norton. All that certain piece, parcel, or tract of land to have and to hold and be simple. In language simple. That's a lot of legal balderdash. That it is. It means we have certain rights, but... Honestly, men make simple things so complicated. It means we either own the land or we don't. Oh, it means that all right. But I'm afraid that there are certain rights of others that the deed doesn't mention. You see, all the people who live about us, they and their families have lived here for generations. Hello, Mr. Norton. Hello, Mrs. Norton. Hello. Hunting, Jimmy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, get anything? Well, almost. That's good. No, it would have been better if I'd hit him. Oh, I closed my eyes. I guess I got a bad habit of closing my eyes. I didn't exactly mean that when I said that's good. I meant what I... Mrs. Norton meant, Jimmy, was that it must have been a pretty good shot to almost get him, but you didn't get him. By the way, what was it that you almost got? Uh, woodchuck. Woodchuck. You mean one of those funny little brown things that look like bears and, and sit up and hold its paws together and wiggles its nose and falls backwards down its hole when you make a noise? That's a fairly accurate description of a woodchuck. And you really wanted to kill it, Jimmy? Woodchucks is bad, Mrs. Norton. Little brown things like that? Sure are. They raise all heck with new seeded fields. And Mr. Warren had a cow last year what stepped in one. And broke his leg. I mean her leg. But, Jimmy, Mr. Norton and I haven't any cows. Yet. David, are you with me or against oh, me? Oh, I'm standing on the sidelines. Well, anyway, a cow has to take his chances. Her chances. And we haven't got any new planted fields. Yet. Now, what Mrs. Norton is trying to say, Jimmy, is that she didn't know woodchucks were so dangerous. What I meant to say, say that's Jimmy... Say, that's a wonderful rifle. What is it? It's a Stevens. A single-shot Stevens. It's all right. Oh, that's great. If it was a repeater, I would have got that woodchuck. Well, a lot of big game has been shot with a single-shot rifle. That's all the pioneers in this country had, you know. Only with a single shot, you have to be good, you know. There's one chance. It's more sporting. David, don't you think that just coming to the point... Claudia, guns are man's business. I'll explain all this to you later. Well... This is a pretty old gun, Mr. Norton. Well, they're the best kind. Who'd want a brand new gun? A gun's like a pipe. It isn't much good until it's been broken in. Gee, you really know about guns, don't you? You're a hunter, too. Well, I've been shooting. What for? What did you shoot, Mr. Norton? A deer. David, how could you have? Mrs. Norton, you're just like my ma. I guess women just really don't understand about hunting, do they, Mr. Norton? How many deer did you shoot? Just one, I... I didn't have to shoot any more. Did you have to shoot that one? I thought I did. I guess that's part of the growing up a man has to do. Gee, did you ever shoot any really big game, Mr. Norton? No. Well, come to think of it, I, I guess I have. What kind? Biggest kind there is, I guess. Gee, that must have been sport. No, no, it wasn't sport. But it had to be done. They were sort of dangerous. There ain't that kind of hunting around here. No. 
I had to take a pretty long trip, and it took us quite a while. We were a long time coming back. Those of us who did come back. Gosh, I'd like to go on a real hunting trip like that. I hope you never have to, Jimmy. I hope you do all the hunting of your life on the fields and hills of Eastbrook. David, it isn't necessary. Sometimes it's very necessary, too. There was a group of farmers who left their fields one summer afternoon and marched toward Concord. They took their hunting rifles with but them. But men don't have to kill. There must be better ways. Mm, there are. And someday all men may use them, but until they do... Look, this country has never fought an unjust war. And has never lost one. And they were fought not by professional soldiers, but by men who were willing to die that others might be free. Men who had learned as kids, even across these acres of ours, how to handle the only weapons that can oppose the power of evil and oppression in the world. This here gun was my dad's gun when he was growing up. Ma finally said I could use it. She won't let me use his other guns, though. My dad was a fine shot. He was in the army, you know. Yes, I know. He must have been a fine soldier. Your dad must have been a fine man, too, Jimmy, to have left you such a rich memory of love. My dad was the best man there is. He would have taken me hunting with him. He always said when I grew up, he would. He would have learned me all about shooting. Closing your eyes when you pull the trigger. That that isn't good, is it? It's the worst thing there is. Jimmy? You know, I have an idea that your father would sort of like to think that when you went out hunting, you knew how. Really knew how. How am I going to learn? Jimmy, I have an idea that if you ask David, he might take you out hunting tomorrow morning. Gee, Mrs. Norton, I think you're swell. <laughs> Gee, Mrs. Norton, I think you're swell, too. When you snatch a few minutes during housework to listen to the radio, you can make those minutes even more enjoyable. Go to the refrigerator, get an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola, and refresh while you listen. Keep Coke on hand, and you can always listen refreshed. Hi, Mr. King. Hiya, Jimmy. Hey, it wouldn't be that I saw you carrying that rifle across the Norton's fields. They just posted their land, you know. Oh, that doesn't apply to neighbors. The Nortons ain't like city folks or summer people. There's a difference? Sure is. The Nortons belong. They're, uh... Neighbors? That's a nice distinction. And I think I get it. By the way, did you, uh, get anything? Almost. But I closed my eyes. But Mr. Norton's gonna show me, show me how about shooting. Him and I were going hunting tomorrow. You are? Gee, I wish I could go along. Maybe I might. But say, what does Claudia think of your hunting? Ah, oh, you know women. At first, she didn't seem to like it so much, and then she came around and said, all right. Women aren't so bad underneath, and next to my ma, I guess, Mrs. Norton's better than most. A very profound observation, Jimmy. Well, I'll be seeing you, maybe tomorrow. Now, as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 